Hello everyone. Today, I want to thoroughly change our perspective on the concept of wealth. Wealth is like the box that our mothers kept hidden on top of the cabinets in their bedrooms. It stands in an unreachable place, constantly looking at us. But we cannot access that box in any way, and we cannot see what is inside. Starting today, let us all gather our courage, stack those chairs on top of each other, and reach that box. Because only if we show the courage to reach that box can we know what is inside it. It is really important for wealth to no longer be an unreachable box. As you know, there is something called learned helplessness. If we cannot associate ourselves with wealth from our childhood, unfortunately, we have no chance of becoming wealthy for the rest of our lives. Now, the foundation of wealth is hidden in three main concepts. In order to become wealthy, you need to break down the entire grammar of these three main concepts. We call this the language of money. In order to speak the language of money, you need to fully grasp these three fundamental concepts. The first of these is understanding money, which means understanding the language of money. Speaking like them means being aware of what the wealthy discuss. Even if you are poor, understanding what your employer or investor talks about among themselves, what daily money issues they face, and how they perceive events. Even if you have no prior investment history, observe those who invest as if they are making investments, learn from them, and imitate them. Understanding money means starting to perceive it from scratch by setting aside all your existing financial biases. Because if you do not decide to rebuild the framework you have created regarding money, you will always have to see the same view from the same place. What I fundamentally ask of you is to break down that framework and to have the intention to meet money again, as if you were reborn. I say intention. Because look, there is a significant difference between desire and intention. We all desire to be wealthy. We all desire to live in those luxurious houses. Or we all want to reach the highest level at work and see the rewards for what we have done. But desire is only the first stage of intention. However, intention is like a vow, like a promise. It has an intrinsic purpose. It is a kind of promise that motivates you to take action. While desires are expressed at the tip of the tongue, intentions are spiritual. Therefore, even in our acts of worship, we do not ask for something from God. We set an intention for something from God. Therefore, having intention is essentially a commitment to the universe that you will take action. As I said, the most important point was to understand money. After understanding money, the second thing we will do is to specialize in the psychology of money. Now that we understand money and our surroundings, what about the problems of the wealthy? What differences do we understand between them and the poor? What kind of problems will we face in our future lives as the wealthy? What difference will this make to our current problems? How will we cope with these issues? We have conducted the necessary research related to this. We now understand money. We know the language of money. Now it's time to specialize in the psychology of money. Many of us have grown up with financial barriers since the day we were born. We have certain commands related to money. These begin from childhood and diversify as one grows up. Money is evil. Money is the mother of all evils. If you are rich, you are greedy. Money only brings evil. Too much money can lead a person astray. We grow up with many money codes that I can list for you such as a little bit of abundance, a carefree head. These money codes ultimately leave us without money because there is a certain coding in our brains. If there is money, bad things happen. Money that is beyond your needs will inevitably lead you down a bad path. If you are wealthy, you are unhappy. If you have money, you cannot trust anyone. Money can never be earned honestly. If someone has become very rich, they must have done something bad. You cannot earn money honestly. 
Why does our brain have cause and effect relationships? Like if my money has increased, then I must have taken someone else's rights. In fact, the biggest obstacle to our wealth is never a lack of money. It is also not the lack of knowledge on how to become wealthy. It is not about never working hard. This is what I call learned helplessness, which refers to our faulty command systems. We will definitely discuss these commands in one of the other videos, and we will work on these commands. Additionally, there is a basic course formation related to this in the system. I recommend that you take this course. When it comes to the concepts of money and wealth, we need to be able to associate ourselves with money and a wealthy life. If we look at ourselves and cannot see our wealthy version, and if we do not have certain frameworks in place regarding how to manage the money we have and how to use it, then that money cannot come to us. Think of it this way. You are cooking a meal, and chefs know this better. You realize that Something is missing in the aroma of the dish. As a result of these negative commands, our subconscious protects us from becoming wealthy. So how does it do this? I can explain it to you roughly. Whenever an opportunity comes our way, especially a financial opportunity, your brain tends to ignore it because it perceives it as a threat and does not bring it into your line of sight to protect you. Two, if somehow that money opportunity came your way, and entered right into your eyes. Then the brain goes into alarm mode. It sees the situation as a way to navigate this opportunity without it harming me. In fact, from the brain's perspective, it becomes not a money opportunity, but a money trap. In the last option, this money opportunity truly came before you. You saw it and you somehow evaluated it and turned it into money. But there is still a negative coding related to money in your brain. What will too much money do to you? It will make you a bad person. Too much money will make you greedy. Too much money will lead you astray. So what does the subconscious need to do? It takes over you in the form of direct behaviors and habits. Either he is making a wrong investment, or he is spending this money in a very unnecessary way. Or in some way, this money comes to you through any game of life. Remember this phrase, it is going from here, to there. However, for those who have mastered the psychology of money, financial opportunities are inevitable gains. Just as it is normal to see fish when you enter the sea. If you are working within the realm of money and have increased your focus in a way that develops your wealth, it is completely natural to see fish or opportunities around you. People who normally live a wealthy life find these financial fortunes very ordinary. Their minds are already focused on those fortunes. They are concentrated on it. Remember that what you look at grows and what you focus on heals. How we focus on our children, right? With all our concentration, we nurture and develop them to be healthy, good individuals, hardworking, successful in life, and to enhance their personalities. It's the same in life. Whatever we focus on, we can grow and expand. If you master the psychology of money in the same way, and if you direct your focus towards the right perspective on money, you will truly begin to expand financially, and this will become a normal part of your usual process. There are five fundamental rules of a wealthy life. Now that you understand the language of money, you will work like crazy on this. First, you will rebuild your relationship with money from scratch. Therefore, you will speak the same language of money. Then, you will master the psychology of money. You will hear the reactions you give yourself. When a money opportunity presents itself, you will listen to yourself. What automatic reaction do you have? Then, is this reaction rational? You will understand this. Is this reaction a normal response? I mean, money comes your way, and you say, oh no, what if this leads me astray? Then you will take that thought and put it right in front of you. I had a money opportunity come my way, and I reacted this way. In fact, if I were in your place, I would write this. 
Then, in response to this, you will give a rational reaction. You will say that everyone who comes into money, and there are examples related to this in life, what did this person do when they received the money? What did he do that opened such a place, provided employment for so many people, offered material assistance to so many, bought a house for his mother, or had the financial power to take his family there? Did he become greedy? Did he do evil? What will you do? You will replace that feeling with the right emotion. Your behavior has come. You looked. A good money opportunity has arisen. Money is really being spent and going away just like that. You will stop yourself immediately. What do your instincts tell you in exchange for this money? Go right now and buy the latest model smartphone. This is what you were waiting for. You would do anything for this phone. Stop yourself immediately. In fact, as I said, take note. What is my reactive response in exchange for this money? The need to run and immediately buy the most expensive phone. So, is this really what I desire? If I do this, instead, will the profit I gain allow me to easily buy that phone? Or is buying that phone actually not important to me at all? Was I buying this phone just to show everyone? Was I hoping that people would say, look, Fulia has made money when I bought this phone? What are we doing? We immediately lay our reactions, habits, and ways of behaving on the table. And what do we do with it? We erase it nicely with an eraser. What should our behavior be like? What have we taught ourselves? We have taught the correct psychology of money. What is the right behavior we need to adopt? Managing our money.